So in this module, I'm going to talk about database mail. Now remember, if you watched the agent jobs module already, in the module on agent jobs, I talked about how SQL Server had to have things long before the operating system had them built in. Database mail is a great example of that. SQL Server needed some kind of way to phone home long before there were nice centralized monitoring and logging tools like, say, Splunk. Database mail is really targeted at administrators. From the get-go, it was really designed, and you can tell this by looking at the way that it works, it was really designed for administrators who needed to email an entire distribution list of people when corruption was found, a backup finished, there was an error on the server, somebody's code failed in a way that broke the server. It's really designed for database administrators. However, you can abuse it. It was not designed for emailing your customers, but it can. So it's time to talk about a little story from my own dark past. My own dark past, before I had an opinionated DBA sit me down and tell me what was good in SQL Server and what was not so good. Long time ago, I was a like, lead developer at a company and I needed to send emails to customers and I needed to ship quickly. So everything that I needed to do the mailing was inside of SQL Server. My customers were in there, the orders were in there, all of that kind of thing. So what I did was I wrote a stored procedure and it looped through the customers that I needed to email based on their order status and sent emails to them. And I thought I was doing pretty good. And then a little while later, there was a bug in my code. The way that I found out about the bug was that when I came into the office, all of the mail administrators at my big giant company were gathered together in a war room, freaked out, trying to figure out why the mail servers had all run out of drive space. And hours later, after they figured out what was going on, they came and had a really polite chat with me and said, Brent, can you tell us why you tried to send over a million emails to customers last night? That was not my brightest moment. Sooner or later, you're going to have a bug inside your own code and you're going to try to send emails to customers. What you don't want to do is trash the SQL server while you're doing it. Your code's going to have bugs regardless, but at least just try to send mail through normal routing changes, not through the SQL server itself. So what this feature is for is for administrators. Inside the next several minutes, what I'm going to do is talk you through setting it up, but everything that I'm going to focus on is really focusing on database administrators, not developers. Database mail is to tell you when your backups failed, when an agent job failed, when the C drive filled up, when you hit database corruption, etc. The things that you're going to need in order to accomplish it is you're going to need an SMTP server. In the screenshots you're going to see me using, you're going to see me using Gmail because I'm not an enterprise person anymore. I don't have my own domain controllers. I don't have my own exchange servers. I'm not using O365 from Microsoft. I am just using Gmail because it's quick and easy for my setup. Don't do that for your production SQL servers. You want to use a bulletproof 24-7 guaranteed email uptime because I know what you're going to do. You're going to think that no failure emails means that everything's working successfully. Sometimes you don't, you're just getting uh, no failure emails because Gmail has implemented some kind of a spam fix where they're not allowing you to send mails, for example, from certain IP addresses. So need your, you need your own reliable SMTP service like O365, whatever corporate service you're going to use. And then you need a distribution email list. Never, ever, ever send emails to an individual. Never, ever, 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 ever send emails to one specific sysadmin. Even if you're the only sysadmin in the company, still build yourself a distribution list because you want to take vacation. And when you take vacation, you want other people to be able to get the emails that you would usually get. If all your emails throughout the entire company were configured to go directly to you, you don't have enough time to change all those before your vacation hits. So what you need to do is use a distribution list and then that way you can add other people into the distribution list whenever you go off and uh, want to take a vacation. 
Now, on the SQL Server side, after you've gathered those two things together, your SMTP server config and your distribution list email address, then you're going to need to make sure that SQL Server is ready to go. You're going to go check to see that Service Broker is enabled, and you're going to check to make sure the database mail extended stored procedures are, procedures are turned on. You'll run these two queries. They're both in the show notes for this particular class. Run these two queries, and you're going to look for the values that you see here on the screen. If Service Broker isn't enabled for some reason, it's possible that you're working with SQL Server Express Edition or like something maybe up in Azure that doesn't support database mail. Um, then the second thing is make sure that uh, MSDB wasn't restored from somewhere. Every now and then you find some old crusty DBA who thought it was a good idea to restore MSDB and then Service Broker isn't working successfully. Neither of those two things I'm going to address inside this class. I'm going to assume that both of those returned values for one. If uh, database mail isn't enabled, which this is totally normal when you're taking over a brand new SQL Server from somebody else or one that you built a long time ago, you can enable database mail with these two commands here. Like we talk about in the configurations module, there's a risk to running the reconfigure statement, and we talk about that in the configuration module. Now, after you've run those two statements, then it's time to go configure database mail. You're going to go into SQL Server Management Studio, go into Management, and then Database Mail. Right-click on there and go Configure Database Mail. The first thing that you'll be asked for is a profile. Profiles contain things like your SMTP server that you're going to use. I'm going to put in there the profile of whatever name I want to call it and then configure, as I go through and hit Next, configure the SMTP servers, port numbers, and authentication that I've gone and gathered that'll let me send mail. After I, and you're all usually going to have to put in some kind of authentication. Almost all mail servers these days will require you to log in just to make sure that you're not some spammer trying to send mail. They won't usually relay emails. Is just another thing to file away in your password change list that if for some reason you change the password for this email address, you're going to have to come back here to your SQL servers and change the password inside there. After you configure those SMTP settings in the profile, then you have to restart the SQL Server agent when you're configuring it for the first time. After the first time you do this, you no longer need to do this. So how safe is it to do this? When you restart the agent service, you're not restarting SQL Server itself, but you are breaking any running jobs. If someone had been running an agent job to go do something, repopulate a reporting table, take a backup, run CheckDB, etc., this will stop that process. It's just another reason why when I talk about in the agent jobs module, you want to minimize the number of jobs that run on the server. You don't want to have all kinds of user stuff inside there. So what we've done so far is we've configured the SMTP services or where we're going to go talk to the SMTP services in order to send mails. Now, who are we going to send mails to? There are two kinds of operators in SQL Server. Regular operators, which are always going to be distribution list emails, remember, or fail-safe operators, emails that SQL Server will go and call when it can't figure out what's going on, who's on duty, or whatever. To configure them, you're going to go into the SQL Server Management Studio GUI, right-click on, or go into Agent, right-click on Operators, and then click Create a New Operator. Here's what that looks like. On the left-hand side, I've gone into SQL Server Agent and then Operators, and I'm setting up my team of competent people. The email name is the email account address that you're going to use to go send it to. Net Send address is a beautiful antique leftover from earlier days of Windows where we could send pop-up messages to people's workstations, and you could even send pop-ups across the entire company. One of my favorite tricks to do was do a net send and tell people that there was cake in the break room when there wasn't really cake in the break room. Unfortunately, those days have passed. There's a pager on duty schedule. I, I honestly never check this out. I never go check all of that stuff. I just assume that everybody's on duty 24-7 because in a distribution list, I kind of leave it up to the people who uh, are just managing their incoming emails to figure out when they're on duty and when they're not. 
Then uh, fail-safe, op that's regular operators. Fail-safe operators is just a special kind of operator that will be used, for example, whenever MSDB isn't accessible. If SQL Server has corruption and MSDB won't come online, for example, you're still going to want emails to go out. So then these are just safe operators that are going to get a hit throughout everybody, or throughout everything. To set those up, follow the instructions here on the screen. I'll give you a minute to read that list while I take a sip of my tasty beverage. It's biscotti flavored coffee. Kind of weird, right? Espresso that tastes like biscotti. So you can kind of get your biscotti and your coffee in the same fell swoop. I'm not a fan of flavored coffees usually, but Nespresso's really kind of good with some of the flavors. Uh, the GUI version of how you go and configure, configure those, you right click on SQL Server Agent, go into Properties, you check the mail profile, and then you go see, you've got to check the checkbox for enabling a fail-safe operator and pick which operator it is. Again, this is why you use a distribution list so that multiple people can be or notified whenever stuff like this happens. Now, everything that I'm showing you here, I'm showing you the GUI way to do it. There's also a scripting way to accomplish all of this stuff. It's just that if you don't do it that often, then this is the easiest way to do it. If you find yourself doing it on a regular basis, I'd really more recommend using PowerShell than I would T-SQL. So now we've established the mail service that we're going to use, the people we're going to email. Now what are we going to send them? If you go brentozar.com slash go slash alerts, uh, especially best viewed in Netscape Navigator, um, I'm going to give you a script of here are the alerts that I recommend setting up. For example, certain severity levels should all get email alerts. When the SQL Server service finds corruption, when there's a catastrophic error executing T-SQL, all you have to do is hit execute on the script that's over there at brentozar.com slash go slash alert slash alert. It's early in the morning, but I haven't started drinking yet. It's only 7.08. There's, uh, seriously, there's no tequila or anything in there. No Bailey's Irish cream. There should be, but there is not. The one thing that you have to do is you have to do a find and replace inside that script to put in the appropriate operator name. So like the competent people, or if you work for friends of mine like Player133, a team of incompetent people. Uh, after you've gone through and tested those, after you've executed that script that goes and sets up the alerts, whenever you type in raise roar in the severity uh, somewhere between like say 16 and 20, when you type in raise roar with log, you should immediately get an error email within 30 seconds, let's say, uh, telling you that there was a severity 20 level error inside your SQL Server. If you don't get one, the first thing to just check back is, did you actually restart the SQL Server agent to make sure that mail uh, notifications took place? If you even restarted that agent and you're still not getting emails, you probably have an error somewhere in your database mail configuration setup. I did this once live on a stream. I did this live on a stream probably a month before I'm recording this video. I configured database mail, and I probably set a record for the level of the number of times that I wanted to drop the F-bomb because I was trying to set up email through Gmail, and I had to go through one configuration step after another. Just make sure you actually do this in here to, to know that your notifications worked. Otherwise, it's real easy to get database mail configuration wrong. Wrong port number, there's a, 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 a firewall in between SQL Server and the mail server, you name it. Um, next, after you've set those up, so my script at brenozar.com slash go alerts catches a lot of the common errors that you'll run into, but you may also care about agent jobs and when an agent job fails, who you send an alert to or who you send an email to. Yes, gracious. To set those up, expand SQL Server agent, expand jobs, then go into the properties list. And on the notifications for that job, you can configure who the emails go to. For example, here I have on my database integrity check, whenever CheckDB completes, I want to go email my team of competent people whenever this job fails. You can send emails whenever jobs succeed and or fail or just complete. Just be careful that you don't set up so many emails, especially success emails. I know people who send themselves email every time a job succeeds, and then their email becomes so overwhelmed that what do they do? They set up a rule in Outlook to dump all the database mails into a folder. 
And at that point, why even alert yourself? Because you're not reading anything inside there, and you're not going to know whenever your services fail. Uh, finally, if you're ever you're doing scripting, so like myself, I'll do all kinds of maintenance scripting. Go, for example, maintaining partitions. If I need to automatically every day uh, add a new partition and drop the oldest partition, I may want to email myself specific information about that, how that worked. Or, for example, in, you may have read my blog post on how to get email notified whenever SQL Server starts up. I like to know whenever one of my SQL Server starts up and how many databases in there are online versus offline. You can send emails inside your own code. Just room, and this is the script that you do. It is super simple, just calling SP Send Mail. You have to know the profile to use to send mail and the recipients who are going to get it. But then you can do all kinds of fancy things in there, like even attach files if you want to. One friend of mine uh, attaches the most recent SQL Server log to his emails. Just be aware that uh, a lot of mail providers have limits on how high the attachment size is for your emails. So what we talked about inside this module was how to configure database mail, how to set up the profiles, alerts, and operators in order to make it work successfully. The thing that I would just take, take away from this at first is database mail really isn't for everyone. It's for administrators, but the instant that you find yourself using it for all kinds of jobs and sending the emails to someone who isn't a sysadmin, that's probably a bad idea. Developers should be in charge of running their own jobs and managing the failure notifications out of that. Developers are really good at that. Encourage them to do that in an application on their own side rather than having SQL Server try to play like it's Hotmail.